Chobani yogurt can give you cancer. Those are the headlines I've been seeing this week on social media. So what is actually inside Chobani yogurt? And why is there a class action lawsuit claiming that it contains plastic chemicals with known disruptors for your hormones and your fertility? The internet is already divided. The headlines are saying things like Chobani linked to toxic chemicals, hidden plastic found inside yogurt, and it's everywhere. But here is the real question. Is there any actual truth to this or is this just another viral panic designed to hijack your fear and sell clicks? Because I'm gonna tell you what I believe. The truth is not in the headlines, we know that. The truth is not found in the emotion, the truth is found in the evidence out there. So today, I'm gonna to break this down. No fear mongering, no industry protection, no sponsored nonsense, just facts, logic, biology, solutions. In this episode, we're gonna cover what the Chobani lawsuit is actually about, what chemicals were actually found, whether they pose a real health risk, where are they coming from, and whether this is really Chobani's problem or a food system problem. And also, if you do eat yogurt, what's a better option? And we're gonna keep it clinical and powerful, so let us get into this. So the Chobani lawsuit, here's exactly what happened. There is a federal class action lawsuit that was filed against Chobani LLC in late 2024. The lawsuit claims that Chobani yogurt contains phthalates, which are industrial plastic chemicals that we know in scientific literature is linked to endocrine disruption, hormonal disruption, lowers your testosterone, reduces your sperm quality, alters fetal development, and it affects your metabolic pathways. But let us get really specific about this. The lawsuit cites third-party laboratory testing from a consumer watchdog organization that tested Chobani's products, and they said that they found toxic chemicals, DEHP phthalate, DEP phthalate, DBP phthalate, DEHT, which is a common phthalate substitute. These are not ingredients. Nobody at the Chobani factory is adding these into the yogurt. The plastic is adding these chemicals into the ingredients. They are not ingredients, they are contaminants, and they're migrating from the plastic equipment and packaging into the food. The lawsuit is not accusing Chobani of poisoning people. I'll say that again. They're not accusing Chobani of poisoning people. The lawsuit is actually about a labeling issue. It argues that Chobani uses phrases like only natural ingredients, which could be misleading if these products are continuously testing for synthetic plastic chemicals. So in plain English, the lawsuit claims false advertising, not intentional harm. But here's a problem that nobody online is talking about. The lawsuit does not reveal the dosages found in Chobani, or I couldn't find it. No numbers, no concentrations, no micrograms per kilogram, nothing. And dosage is everything. We have to know how much is in there. Your body can metabolize. Your body's incredible at detoxifying. But if you eat Chobani every day, how problematic is it? Well, what if you eat 10 Chobanis every single day? How problematic is it? Is there a number? Because we really want to get into that. So if we don't have the dosages, we can't really calculate exposure and we can't measure the health risks. So when people online are screaming Chobani causes cancer, that's not just scientifically false, it can be irresponsible without knowing the dosages. But here's where things do get serious. Phthalate exposure is not a conspiracy. It is real. It is widespread. I did a show speaking about one of the biggest issues in fertility for human beings in the next 20, 30 years is going to be phthalate exposure. And it's linked to many different health consequences, and we see it in scientific literature. What do phthalates do in the body? So this chemical is a nasty one. They are a class of industrial chemicals. They're used to make plastics flexible especially PVC type plastics. And that's what's used in food processing, equipment, tubing, conveyor belts, ink coating, seals. These are not chemically bound to the plastic, which means that under the right conditions, it can leach into the medium that it's in, whether it's water or soda or food, especially if the food is fatty or protein rich, like dairy, like meat. So let's go into the health effects. These chemicals, are classified endocrine disruptors. So if you're ever suffering with a hormonal issue, let's say your testosterone's really low and you really wanna get it up, or your estrogen progesterone is messed up and you're suffering with acne, these are hormonal issues and the hormones are really sensitive, especially to exogenous agents like phthalates, things that we're being exposed to in the environment, which is why I speak so much about environmental medicine. So this means that they interfere with your hormones, they disrupt them. 
And the science on this isn't fringe at all. It's well established. Here's what the research shows. Exposure to phthalates like DEHP and DBP, both found in the Chobani yogurt, has been linked to reduced levels of testosterone in men. Big problem. That's seen out of Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health. Phthalate exposure during pregnancy is associated with impaired fetal development. Reduced anal genital distance in male infants, which is problematic because penises are getting smaller. Altered reproductive function, and we see this from Swan and Human Reproduction Journal. And the studies have linked higher phthalate levels to increased risk of metabolic dysfunction, like abdominal fat gain or insulin resistance. We see this in the journal Environmental Health Perspectives. Children are especially vulnerable to exposure of phthalates. You want to keep your kids away from this because it can affect their cognitive health. Lower IQ scores, ADHD, we see that in the Lancet. It's not lightweight science. This is why Europe regulates these chemicals so aggressively, better than us here in America. They take a better safe than sorry approach, especially when we're thinking about children and their development. In the US, it's kind of corrupt. And, and this might not be a surprise to you. These chemicals are still legal in contact with food. And that's the real story about all of this. Now, before we go deeper, is any of this new? No, plastic chemical contamination in food has been well documented for years. Chobani is not the first one. It might be a really popular one right now, though. Chobani is not, it's not unique here. And that's important to understand. This is not just a one-off scandal. This is actually a problem in the entire food system. The people who are villainizing Chobani need to villainize all of the products in their fridge and in their pantry that are in plastic. So now the big question becomes, if this contamination is real and it's proven, how worried should we be about it, especially about Chobani, if you love that yogurt? Are the levels high enough to matter? Well, we don't know the levels, as we know, but we really need to cut through this clickbait and bring some clarity. Yes, the lawsuit claims phthalates were found in Chobani yogurt. That part is true. But again, here's the problem. We don't have the dosages. We don't know the micrograms per kilogram, which is really important. We don't have any parts per billion data. There's no serving concentration. There's no third party test, there's no there's results. They need to publish those results. I couldn't find it anywhere. I looked everywhere, I looked for a while. And without those dosages, you cannot measure the actual biological impact. We just don't know. You can't compare safety thresholds. You can't evaluate risk. So why does dosage matter so much? I'll give you context. Regulatory bodies like the European Food Safety Authority, they have daily limits for exposure to different phthalates. DEHP is 50 micrograms per kilogram per day. That means about a 150 pound adult would have a tolerable daily intake of about 3,400 micrograms per day. So we don't know how much is in Chobani. We don't know what the results are. And I don't know if those results are 3,400 micrograms just in Chobani. It's most likely not that. It's most likely much lower. Now, typical phthalate levels found in other yogurt studies, not Chobani, have tested between 5 to 15 micrograms per liter. If Chobani tested anywhere near that range, it would likely not exceed the European Food Safety Authority standards. However, and here's the key, that does not make it safe. Why? Because that's only half the story. There are two scientific problems here. Cumulative exposure, we're not exposed to phthalates just from one food source. You're not just having Chobani and exposed to phthalates. They're in processed food, fragrance products, vinyl flooring if that's in your home, cosmetics, fast food wrappers, personal care products. The exposure stacks up throughout the day. And yogurt might not be dangerous alone, really, but if it's part of the load, I want you to think of loads, buckets being filled up, then it matters. Hormones do not play by toxicology rules. Endocrine disruptors like phthalates don't follow the just this amount of dose will make the poison logic. They can actually show nonlinear effects, meaning that low doses of this chemical like phthalates, we've seen this in BPA in the past, can trigger developmental and reproductive issues already. Even at low doses, you'd expect higher doses to get even worse, but we see a very unique dose response. So phthalates, and things like BPA, even at low, low doses can be problematic. So is Chobani yogurt toxic on its own? Probably not. Is the contamination irrelevant? Probably not. Does it increase your total hormonal burden? Yeah, it does. So now the next question becomes, where is this coming from? 
Why are even natural brands showing contamination? And what does packaging have anything to do with it? We're gonna talk about it. Phthalates are most commonly used to soften PVC. That's where it's coming from. I mentioned it before. I want you to remember, it is a plastic softener chemical. Yogurt cups in the United States are typically propylene plastic number five, most of them. If you look in the bottom, you're gonna see number five. And that's a rigid resin that doesn't require phthalate plasticizers. So then where would this contamination come from? From the supply chain, not the cup itself. Think about it. Processing lines, using flexible tubing, gaskets that are being exposed to the lining to be exposed to the container of which the yogurt is in there. Seals, liners that are under the lid, conveyor belts and gloves during manufacturing, inks, coatings, adhesives, labels on the foil itself that you peel off when you're ready to eat it. There are upstream ingredients that are already picking up plasticizers during transportation and storage. In other words, this is likely an industry-wide pathway issue rather than just a single brand being uniquely reckless. And this is why you can test many packaged foods and detect some levels of plasticizers. The system was never designed to be at zero migration. So would switching the cup material fix it? Not necessarily, especially if the processing pathways to make the product still use flexible PVC components that are upstream. In my expertise then, is this a real risk or is it overblown? I'm gonna draw a clinical line here. If you are pregnant, if you are trying to conceive, feeding infants and toddlers, dealing with hormonal sensitivity conditions like thyroid issues or endometriosis or low testosterone, if you're undergoing fertility treatment, I recommend minimizing cumulative exposure from foods that carry plasticizer contamination. That's not fear, that's just being very prudent about everything. This is risk management. If you're generally a healthy adult with low overall exposure, right, you, you keep your environment clean, a single serving of yogurt is more than unlikely to create a problem clinically. But remember, exposure will stack through time. And the goal is to move your total load down without panic. So two truths can live here, basically. This is not proof that a single brand of yogurt will cause cancer. But really, this is the credible reason to clean up packaging contact in your routine. Really think about how much packaged foods you're eating, especially if you're in a sensitive group. So when you think about yogurt, I want you to think about three tiers. The cleanest packaging lane you can go is glass packed yogurt whenever it's possible. In many markets, you can find OUI, we by Yoplait, that's in glass. La Fermiere, which often uses glass and ceramic. Uh, glass avoids really that direct plastic cup contact from the food that could be adulterating it. If you end up buying larger tubs that are in plastic, you might wanna take that food, put it in a glass at home, store it and refrigerate it there. Because less contact time with plastic is better than days of contact after opening. So you wanna just be really vigilant about that. You wanna balance practical approach. You wanna choose brands that use number five polypropylene cups and minimize heat exposure and time in those cups. Remember, you can always put it in glass when you get home. You can buy, refrigerate, and consume them promptly rather than just letting open cups sit for days. That can be a problem. Avoid microwaving or warming anything near plastic cup. We know that. Favor plain Greek yogurt and add your own fruit and honey. Make it healthy. Fewer processed ingredients means fewer packaging and processing surfaces. So go with the plain, make it taste of your own, and you avoid all that unnecessary sugar spike. Put some fiber in there too. You might even want to go the premium and direct farm lane. This is a really interesting one. You can just look for local dairies that bottle culture products in glass and returnable containers. Some premium brands will sell yogurt or kefir and glass in select markets. So look around, go to your farmer's market, ask around, research around, go really straight from the source as best as possible versus you know mass production. And the same goes with non-dairy options. Coconut is also fatty rich. Almonds are also fatty rich. Go with glass first before plastic, but if you need to have it in plastic, transfer it and store it the sooner the better. Should you throw out everything in your fridge? No, you don't need to, but uh, take guidance about this for the next time.
Keep that eye on the number five polypropylene packaging. Make sure you're not overheating, ever actually heating that packaging. You wanna make sure you transfer it to glass. These are all just easy tips. The other thing that we don't actually think about is the foil on top of the yogurt. That label contains adhesives and those contact points. We don't wanna scrape all of the yogurt off of that foil because we're scraping also the adhesive, which can be exposed. So here is the truth that does not fit in a headline. Really, the problem is not one brand. It's the supply chain that tolerates that low level of migration of industrial chemicals into our food. The bigger problem is plasticizers being used overall and how other countries have much stricter policies and how America is really loose and how it's affecting our food supply. I would love for brands to be more vigilant about third-party testing for chemicals and putting that on their website and actually empowering us as consumers to choose their brand as we get smarter about consumerism. And any brands that are taking this to account, endocrine disruptors, BPA, not only BPA was years ago, we were going about BPA free this, BPA free that. Now we have to talk about phthalates. We really wanna make sure that these brands are doing right by us. Look, the bottom line, Chobani's being sued over alleged detection of plasticizer chemicals in certain yogurts. And the case is about labeling and marketing language. It's, it's not a poisoning accusation. So remember that if you see that on Instagram or TikTok. The chemicals cited are commonly found across processed foods. Uh, and it's because of that migration from the equipment to the packaging. And unfortunately, the public filings don't list the exact dosages. So we can't calculate. I can't even speak about it clinically. Most levels of chemicals in yogurt are going to be in micrograms per liter or kilograms or parts per billion. And it's unlikely that they exceed daily limits. Um, so it may be overblown to some capacity unless they their results show something that I could never have expected. So if you're pregnant, trying to conceive, feeding infants, dealing with hormonal issues, since you're just a sensitive person, go with glass or start moving your yogurt into glass and refrigerating it. If this was helpful, share it with someone you love, share it with someone who eats yogurt. And remember all my historical product reviews, the best brands of the industry are all connected on the show notes. All you have to do is click and you'll be able to see the master list yourself. Enjoy your yogurt. Take a breath. You'll be good. I'm Dr. G. I'll see you next time.